Hi, my lovely people. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Your girl has been ghost for a few days and there has been a lot going on over there in the McIntyre household. So we are definitely going to talk about it all today, but let's get the business out the way. Okay. Section 107 fair use allows us to talk about it. And that's what we are here to do. Please don't go out of your way to dislike anybody we talk about in this video. It is for entertainment purposes only. At this point, baby, it can't be for nothing but entertainment, right? And please, everybody, keep in mind, it is our opinion and our opinion only. So we're going to kick this right on off, right? Because it's been so much going on. It's like, where do we want to start? So let's start with something more simple before we get into the more difficult things, right? So since your girl has been gone, there has been quite a bit going on. There's been gambling, there's been drama, there's been diss tracks, there's been TikTok bands, there's been a lot. So let's just start off by saying, okay, five boys, she released her diss track. We didn't talk about this yet. I did listen to it. Now I will tell you guys, I'm not one that listens to music that has so much cussing that I just can't stand it. Um, but I did take a look and I did take a listen. I listened to it over on Spotify. Then I realized it was over on YouTube. So it, it's, it's everywhere. So I'm pretty sure that everybody in here has already heard the diss track. I will say that I do find it catchy. Okay. I do find it catchy. And I do find that, um, she did have some valid points. She was over there talking about when you speak about my mama, or when you speak about mine, my words are going to come out like bullets. She was talking about how someone can, you know, pretend to have a lot of money and pretend to be paid. Yet you getting cars repoed, your views are down. You come out looking crazy in a hot mess. Your hair look a hot mess. I mean, it was a catchy song and that's all that I can say about it. Now, uh, Peach, right? She had disappeared like the little scaredy cat she is. She tucked her tail between her legs. She ran off, right? But she came back to let us know that she wasn't hiding, honey. She was out here at the casino, okay? She said, I'm not out here hiding. Y'all looking for me. I'm at the casino. I'm having me a good time. I'm gambling like crazy. Now, keep that in mind. And I'm having a good time doing it. I'm making money. Now, just like I've said before, right? Her subscribers are over there in the comments. I hope you have fun. I hope that you're doing this. Oh, I'm so happy to see this. Your skin is going yada, yada. What is the difference in addiction? I, I mean, this is where my I get tongue-tied and my head starts to hurt. When someone gets on here and tells you, well, I have a, a gambling addiction, right? And then you see that they're back fully into their addiction. It's in full swing. This is a woman who has told us that she has literally sat at a table or in a casino for 18 hours straight until she just couldn't take it no more. That she goes there and it's her happy place and she needs it as a release. And she will walk out and lose all of her money to the point where when she gets home, she has to sell cars, sell classes, sell bundles, sell everything that she can come up with. But it's cute when she's gambling, right? So that would be like say, an alcoholic saying, well, guess what? I have an addiction to alcohol, but I can control it. I can just do it sometime, even though I'm going to drink and drive, even though I can harm someone, even though I'm slowly harming myself and everyone around me, it's okay. So I guess once again, the peach patch is a big patch of enablers and they think that that is cute. And so as the time goes on, what does Peach do? She drops her a song and instead of it being towards five boy or, you know, trying to, uh, you know, play along with it or get into the whole diss tracks. She releases some song about adversity, right? The whole music video of adversity is her and Wood. Her and Wood going through, I guess, times that she thinks, you know, needed to be pointed out. Who knows? Who cares? At this point, you make a, a music video and you talk about adversity, but you got to keep uh going. You got to keep G-O-I-N-G. -I, -N -G. I mean, I didn't get it. But anywho, you're showing that when you guys have all of this money, how y'all was blowing it, y'all was blowing it, all this jewelry, all these luxury, you know, luggages, taking these trips and doing this. And now you're showing how you walking around with your hair standing up and wood has uh, got one foot in the door and one foot out the door. So it's not adversity. Yeah, that when you go through a relationship that's got nothing but downs and very, you know, little ups. That's not adversity that you're going through. That is just called something that you accept, something you like, and it's a behavior that you are acquainted with and that you are not going to leave. Adversity would be uh, going through something and then getting over it. You and your husband both have been out here trying to say that y'all are sober, y'all are gambling free, that y'all ain't drinking, that y'all ain't doing this, and we all see it's a lie. So 
we can talk about that all day long, right? But bottom line of it is, the girl is still going to go and keep uh, dissing Peach, and Peach is going to continue to run with her tail between her legs. Now, a lot of people were inboxing me and saying, well, Storm, do you see these people dancing to Peach's uh, no lip gloss and makeup, whatever song? And yeah, I see it. And that's how it's going to go, right? A lot of people that follow Peach are young-minded. They're, that's how it's going to go. Everyone's going to have a supporter. Everyone's going to have someone who's going to want them to do good. You're going to have diehard supporters, and Peach has those. But they do not outweigh the people, okay, that the Five Boy has. She has 1.2 million people backing her. So mm, them talking about pretty with no makeup, and Peach is out here obviously using filters or putting something on her skin because one minute it's looking like she's a uh, so sleepy she could fall asleep anywhere and then the next minute she wide awake and then one minute she's got uneven skin tone then the next minute it's all clear one minute it's so dry you look like uh you could go and rub that thing and a freaking match would spark off of it then the next day is full of vaseline who even cares at this point seems like peach has a lot more going on than uh that and this is how we get into this oh my god oh my god now before we start talking about this whole CPS thing, there is one thing that I want my audience to know. If you've been with me for a while, you do know that I have been through the CPS thing, that content creators have called it on me. I have been docked, and I'm going to tell you I don't believe in it. I think it's, uh, you know, bringing something up in somebody's life that just is a hassle. Nobody should want to deal with it, and no one should. Um, at this point, okay, so it's happened. So now that it's happened, we're going to talk about it. But I personally don't believe in it. I don't like all of this. And that's kind of the new trend on uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. People who are on here and are downright outly abusing their children, nobody says anything to, like the Ruby Franks. But then there's other people, right, that could be just on here minding a business. And that's just the way of someone using a form against you to try and harm you. But anywho, let's talk about this. Peach first goes on Instagram showing a video that CPS has showed up at her house. Not once, not twice, but numerous times. This is my whole thing. We've seen a lot of people call uh, CPS on Peach. At this point, as many times that they've been there, shouldn't she have a caseworker? But we'll talk about that. She shows the woman, the woman's asking not to be filmed. She says that um, she is there for inadequate supervision. She also um, says that, according to Peach, if she does not get to see the children, that she will issue an Amber Alert. And I'm just like, okay, this is going down the rabbit hole kind of fast, kind of quick. And there's a lot of things I have questions about, right? Um, I'm going to tell you, I don't think it was a skit. Um, the woman who showed up, she did have her whole uniform on. She had her badge displayed and she was asking to not be filmed. And Peach was standing out there. I will say this. Peach looked totally disheveled, right? We do know that the day before CPS showed up this time that it was Wood's birthday. She did make a community post, right? And she showed the baby. She showed the baby and on the community post, y'all can go look. She showed the baby eating a bottle. And she said um, they had to stop what they were doing because the baby was crying on the monitor. And, you know, we know what they were supposedly doing. But she came out there and she looked totally disheveled. And when I tell you uh, Wood looked disheveled too with that CPS worker there, Wood was moving around so fast in the background trying to get to his truck. I don't know what he was feeling around with in that truck. I don't know what he was doing. But typically, okay, when CPS or something like that shows up for your children and you're a married couple or your parents, don't you stand there as a team and talk to them? But it was like he was so busy trying to get in that truck, he, he couldn't even focus. We heard him mumbling in the background, but we didn't know what he was actually saying. So Peach kind of does like she always does and interprets, you know, what he's saying. And she tells us, well, Wood doesn't want us to show our children today. So we're not going to do it. We're just not going to comply. We're going to fight this. She says that CPS is harassing them. She says that they have just come there last week. So why are they back this week? She also says that she's going to get a lawyer because she feels as though CPS is harassing her. Now, this is a lot to unpack. So we'll go segment by segment. Um, it then gets on YouTube, you know, because she only dropped it on Instagram at first. And then it gets to going. This is my thing. Someone shows up 
and they say that they have a whole new report and it's inadequate child care. Well, my first guess would be, to me, that sounds like someone professional called that in. And that sounds like maybe it's someone close to you. I ain't going to say that it ain't somebody that is on these YouTube streets, TikTok streets or whatever. But for someone to call in and say that, that seems a little personal. Also, if you didn't put on here, right, that, hey, when I go and gamble, I stay there for hours upon hours. I don't know when to leave. And if you didn't get on here and tell us, like on your birthday, well, my husband, he still gambles. He spends all day at the casino. Or if you don't say things like, I'm going to meet wood at the casino. Or if you didn't say things, because see, we can keep going on with the oars. Like, um, yeah, me and my husband, um, I'm going to go tear this casino down and my husband's over there winning. You get out here and you let people know that when you're at the casino, Wood is right there next to you. And half the time, Wood beats you there, so you're joining him. So that opens up the whole thing of who are with the children? Who are with them? Because at this point, state law does say that Gregory McKay, right, is old enough to watch over his siblings. But the state law also says that a child of Gregory's age is not supposed to be watching more than two children at a time. Because at the end of the day, guess what? At his age, how can he control all six siblings other than himself? There's no way that he can do that, especially keep in mind that she has two toddlers. Then she has middle-aged children. Then she has some that's kind of coming into the teenage years. But she also has one child that um, really, really needs some attention. Choice needs some one-on-one -on -one attention. There's no way that he could be walking around trying to feed Phenomenal a bottle if he's having a fit and be keeping an eye on Choice. It just can't happen. That's too much for one parent to uh, do. keep an eye on seven children. So it's way too much for someone of his age to do. Let me just say that. That's number one. And it's also stop telling all your business. That's my thing. We wouldn't know that Wood was with you if you didn't always say it. We wouldn't know Wood was with you if you didn't always try and film him to show that, oh, my man is here. We wouldn't know where Wood was, okay? But I'm going to tell you, something is going on because Wood got in that truck so fast and he was so fumbly. I don't know exactly what's going on over there. But like I said, it caught my eye and it caught to be real fishy that not both parents stood there talking to him. But we got to keep going on. I got to keep saying or I got to keep saying but because it's a lot, right? Peach also says, well, you can't see the kids. My whole thing about it is if there's nothing going on in your home, when CPS was called on me, I showed you guys. If it's nothing going on, let them go in so it can be over with. Man, you could have told all the kids to come outside. <clears throat> Excuse me. You could have told all them to line up outside. Here go my children and go on about your business. One thing I also found funny was you were at home, but Gorgeous was FaceTiming you from getting her hair done. The kids were just everywhere. That's one reason why you couldn't tell them to all come outside. And then, right, you couldn't tell CPS, well, I let one kid go here, one kid go there. But we're standing here and I look like I just woke up and got out the bed. It didn't add up. Another thing that I caught very funny, right? One thing I caught very funny was Peach kept saying, I'm not having a mental breakdown. I'm not having an emotional breakdown. That's not even anything that you said that the CPS worker said. You said she was there for inadequate child care. So what does this nervous breakdown stuff have to do with it? Uh, that one threw me off for a whole loop. Another thing, she says she's getting an attorney because she feels like CPS is harassing her. One thing I will say, and maybe you guys know more, typically if someone is continuing to call CPS on you, they will give you a caseworker, right? So I'm trying to figure out why do all these different people keep showing up? Shouldn't she have a caseworker at this time? I don't know how it works in Florida and maybe you guys do, but I will say this. Um, when I got CPS called on me, they came out here. The woman who came out said, I'll be your caseworker. I'm going to see your child. And then um, I'll talk to his father. And then the case will be dropped. In the meantime, in between time, people were still on here calling and doing everything else. She let me know what was going on, but she still dropped it all. They were, you know, I had a caseworker. That's what she was there for. I let her know where it was coming from. I mean, the people called them on live. You know, if you were here, you knew. I'm not understanding where is her caseworker? Where is this one person? Is this how it works in other states that they just hop around and send out people? I know it's a new complaint, but with the open case like she claims she has and then being there last week, where's the woman from last week? Where's the woman there from, you know, last month? I mean, it, it's kind of crazy of what's going on. But my thing about it was 
Peach told us that she already had a lawyer on retainer years and years and years and years ago. She's told us this so many times. I have a lawyer. He's on retainer. People talking about me, they're going to get sued. People lying on me, they're going to get sued. Of course, nothing has ever happened. So where is this attorney that you have on retainer? Because if someone is coming to my house like this back to back, then you darn right and he on retainer. I'm going to give them a call and let them know what's going on. And I would have been had them step in. Once again, it's a lie. Also, Peach has gotten out here and told us several times that she has hired a nanny. Oh, I've been hiring a nanny. Yeah, I got somebody on call. I got nannies. I got maids. Well, once again, if this was true, the woman who came out there saying inadequate uh, child care, inadequate supervision, whatever, right? You should have been able to pick your phone up and call the woman who's a nanny and be like a woman, man, at this point, we don't know, but she probably would have picked the phone up and called and it would have rang over in uh, Wood's truck. But huh, you should have been able to call the nanny and say, hey, when I'm out, can you let them know that you watch them and maybe show some payroll, whatever the case may be. But it's a big old funky lie. Everything is a lie with her. My thing is you got on here at what? It was probably three or four o'clock on a Saturday letting everyone know that CPS had just got to your house, right? And you looked like you had been asleep all day. That wig that you had just when it got done the day before was all flipped up like a fly trap, like I call it. The glue wasn't gluing. The math was not mathing. Nothing was adding up. You looked totally stunned. You and Wood ran out of that house like y'all was in there doing something that y'all didn't have no business doing. Y'all didn't want that woman to come in that house because that house was probably in total chaos. We do, like I said, know that Wood's birthday was the day before. If y'all think in y'all right mind that Peach and Wood just sat around that house, absolutely not. She didn't sit around that house on her birthday and she shared the same birthday as her child. So if you knew Wood wasn't sitting around there. You know they had been at that casino all day and night. They came home. They was tired. They wanted to sleep all day. They wanted to just take a nap. They was laying around. The kids had towed the house up the night before. We just here to tell the truth. Gregory McKay couldn't clean up after him. Wood was going to get out there and do his nanny duties. They were just waiting to wake up. She didn't want that woman to see what how chaotic that home was. And another thing, why didn't Wood stand there with you as uh, your husband? Why is he always trying to get away? What is going on with that? Now, I do hear a lot of people say, well, he's probably not supposed to be there or something like that. I don't think it's that. I think that would be higher than giraffe, right? <laughs> giraffe, you know what? I think that he uh, is also not mentally co uh, comparable to even talk about anything, right? Also, I think that he gets him a social security disability check and it's because of his mental. So mm, no one's going to listen to one word that he says. So he'd rather stay in the background and mumble. And Peach is just so outright ghetto and outright trashy and outright nasty that she wants to take the lead. She always wants to do all the talking and she talks him right into a hole. She also, right? She also was standing there looking as though she wanted to cry. Like she was like really on the verge of maybe having some kind of uh breakdown right there when they showed up. And typically we've seen her with CPS show up when she was, uh, I'm clean and I love myself. Didn't she let them right in the door? Didn't she have no problem filming? Didn't she have no problem laughing? Didn't she have no problem giggling? So what made her not want to let them in that day and say, well, Wood we'll said they're not going to see the kids. We'll never know. I'm going to guess the house was in total chaos. I'm going to guess that she had, uh, you know, been out the night before with her husband. And I believe that those kids tore that house up. It's probably food coloring. It's probably roaches crawling around. It's probably food piled up. She just didn't want it to happen because she was not prepared or ready. Now, who? that was a lot to talk about. But when I tell y'all, it's so much going on out here surrounding her that it's almost, you know, sad at this point. But according to Pete, she's bouncing back, right? She's out here and she's bouncing back. She's telling everybody that if you want to buy this and want to buy that, then you need to purchase now. She's saying that she's going to have her a hit record before the end of 2020 for Baby, she's out here telling us that she's going to buy horses, houses, and she's going to be just the it girl. She's telling us uh, all her prices are going up, so y'all better buy now. You know, the same old thing. She's also saying that if you want to put a wig on her head or want to do her hair, you're going to pay her $500 for promotion. Now, I'm going to just say this. 
First off, she does have followers, so that's what she's trying to charge for. But a person can have 7 billion followers and no one buy the product. It does happen. First off, anybody that does Peach's hair, touches her hair, it looks a mess. Y'all need to go over and ask Barbie, who does Peach hair all the time, and she doesn't have to pay the $500. Instead, Peach says she's paying $1,700. Y'all need to go and ask Barbie how much money uh is she getting and how many new clients is she getting off peach because i don't think she's getting any peach's hair looks a hot mess when she goes to barbie and something is going on with barbie because even uh gorgeous wasn't at barbie's uh place because we see she wasn't advertising that but anywho somebody needs to ask the girl who did her other wig the orange one how many new uh people did she get how many people are walking in to get that wig placed on their hair and look like a whole hot mess the girl who's doing the green hair, who's done her hair before, you know, in the past. How many new clients are you getting off Peach? Because I don't think you're getting a lot. Her hair looks a mess. Peach is not a good hair model. Peach is not a good model for anything. That's why, that's the problem that people don't realize. That's why Kurt Geiger didn't want to work with her. That's why people like Hello Fresh. That's why people like uh, Michael Kors. That's why people that she shops with, that's why no one wants to deal with her. And that's why no sponsorship will deal with her, right? Because of how she looks and how she acts. If you do Peach's hair, right? What is it going to do? Look decent while she's in the salon doing the breakdown and the boogie woogie? Because once she leaves, it looks a hot trashy mess. So she's not a great place to, you know, uh, begin your advertisement or begin to tell someone, come here, I do Peach McIntyre's hair. Girl, people are going to run down the street. They're going to be like, you mean that mess that she got standing up on top of her head? Do you mean that mess, what it was looking like when CPS showed up at her front door? That hot mess? No, absolutely not. But there'll be some dummy that will pay it. And I'm going to tell you, just because she has followers doesn't mean that that means they're new clients for you. That just means that um, if you're going to do her hair, maybe you'd be better off putting her a whole mask on, cover up her damn face, cover up her damn hair, and cover everything else up. Ooh, we, y'all, that was a lot. That was a lot that we had to get out in one little thing. But I'm telling y'all, I am keeping up with everything. I am trying to, you know, stay on top of everything. And we are going to stay on top of everything. I want to tell you guys happy Monday. I want to tell you guys thank you for being here. I want to tell you guys I'm going to try to get back on posting every single day and doing it when it happens. I am really trying to keep up. Life is lifing and it is just is what it is and it's going to be what it's going to be. But I do thank you guys for being here. I thank you guys for watching. We will continue to talk about this at a later date. I do want to do a live and have some call-ins this week, but we will take care of it all so we can hear everybody's opinion on everything. Happy Monday. The week has started, right? The week has started. The last few days of April. You guys go out, enjoy it, have a wonderful time. I just thank you for being here, everybody that is here now, and the people who will be in the replay. I will talk to you guys 